Welcome back. So now we have some kind of uh, application that can actually show a list of products. The next thing I kind of want to play around with is just being able to delete a product because that would mean that we have a promise that we can talk from. And that promise, I want to kind of explain that to de into details next lesson. So we're going to try and add a delete button for each of these items so that we can click a delete button and then the item will be gone on Firebase. That's what we're going to try and do this lesson. So let's try and jump into our code right here. Now I'm going to start in the service actually and just create the delete function. So step one right here for me will be to go down here and make just a function called, let's just call it delete product. And there we'll put in an ID. So it'll be the ID of the product I want to delete right here. And um, let's just end it right here for now um, without all this gibberish. What's going on? What's going on, crazy hands? There we go. I'll add curly brackets right here. And then in the end, I just have to kind of figure out how to delete the product. And Luckily, it's pretty simple with Angular Fire 2. So let's jump into Angular Fire 2 and see what they have to say about deleting products. I'll just jump into the collection part of Angular Fire 2, going to the root right here, um, jump into the document part was what I meant. Let's just find it right here, documents, because I think that's where I can see how to delete a single document. So if I scroll down on documents right here, you'll see there's a set, update, and a delete function right here. And let's see if they have an example. It seems they have an example right here where we go and get a doc like this. That's the specific document we want. And then we can just call dot delete on that document. So let's try and do it in the code. Jumping back to the code, we have the delete function right here. I can say this.db as always to kind of get access to Firebase, right? And there I can say dot uh, document. That's the document I want. And in my case, I know it's inside the product path because it's a product I want to delete. And then I'll just add right here the ID for that product by just adding a plus and then just writing ID. Because now I'm looking specifically for the document inside the collection of products and with the specific ID, right? So that's pretty much the way that you kind of narrow down into a specific ID. They do the same thing here. It's the user called David. They just don't have a default generated ID. They just have a name right here instead. So now that we have the document and I can even specify that it is actually a product I want to delete. So maybe that it's not that important this time because I'm just deleting something and I don't expect to get the product back. But still, we can put it in here just to explain that I'm working with products right here uh, if I want to. So now I have the document that I want to delete. The next step could be that I say delete and I'm actually done. That's all I have to do. Let's just try and use this. So what I'll do next is I'll jump into my product list component. And here I need a function that can then call this in the service. So I'll just make a function right here called delete product. Again, now I'm in the component. I'll again, this time I'll just send in the product that I want to delete, right? And then all I have to do is kind of say, I want to use the product service that I built. And that guy, I want to call the new function I just made called delete. And delete product needs an ID. So I'll get the ID right here from the product. And the only reason I can get that ID is, of course, because in the last lesson, we kind of went in and figured out a way so that we can return the ID. So that's, of course, very important to make this work. So let's not do anything else right now. Now we just need to call this guy. So we need a button. So I'm jumping into the HTML. And here for each item I'm building right now, I'm getting uh, some kind of list item right here. And what I'll do is pretty much just add a button inside that list item. And I'll just say delete. It'll look hideous for now, but it doesn't matter because it's just the idea is just to kind of show you guys how it works. I'll add a click event right here and there I'll send in the actual product to my delete product function right here. Now that's pretty much all I had to do. Now delete should be ready. Uh, again, it looks hideous probably because it's just an ugly delete button inside a list item, but let's check it out. You'll notice I have a delete button for each of my items now. And if I call this delete, I'll actually hopefully delete this on the back end. That was it. I'm done, right? Pretty amazing stuff. Let's have a look and it just disappeared up here as well. Let's also just for the fun of it, try and just open two applications right here. I'll just open another products application over here to have two of them. And now let's try and delete on this page Doop. and check out the other one. And it's also deleted here, right? So we also have real time data up and running. So that's pretty much how simple it was for me to do a simple delete. But there are a few things I didn't take care of yet. For instance, don't I want some kind of event when things are deleted that could make sense? Um, why don't I use this promise right here? You actually get a, a kind of a validation information right here saying promise returned from delete is ignored. Maybe I want to kind of use the promise to figure out what actually happens when I delete my product. So let's end it right here. Now you've kind of seen how this can work. Uh, so that's it for this lesson. See you next time. Have fun.